I ask you this question. What's that? I'm sorry. I had to go. No, I, no there's I'm nothing sorry. to be sorry about. It is what it is. Where is the historically greatest offense the NBA has ever seen? Uh, Where season. was it in the final seven minutes of that game? Regular season. Getting stripped, getting pocket picked by Draymond Green. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it's funny because we were told that we were idiots and we, like a lot of like Warrior fans. And, and you know, look, I had reservations. But, like, everyone, the playoffs are different. We kept saying that. All of us. The playoffs are different. You know why? Because we've been here and done that in the been playoffs. Been here before. And we understand it's different. And there's a feeling out period. And there's a synergy period for the team to kind of get going. And all the stuff in the regular season is irrelevant. Yep. I mean, their whole road regular, regular, uh, regular season record. We could throw that out the window now. Oh, it's done. they played now. They've played now. I'd say three good games, two great games on the road against the Kings. Had a chance to win both of those games. Um, and and they, they walked away with the one win. Does anyone care? Right now, when they move on to the second round, because it's going to happen, when they move on to the second does anybody give two flying you-know-whats about what they did during the regular season in November, Nobody. December, and January? Because we were all saying we're getting ready for the Warriors Invitational. That's what this time is. It's the Warriors Invitational, Shasky. And, you know, they keep tweeting at us and, you know, insecure is loud. Insecure is loud. Well, they've acted like the insecure ones all series long. They've acted like they've moved the needle. Bonte. Oh, my God, the ratings. Steph Curry's been involved in seven or ten of the highest rated games in the NBA all time. Steph Curry's been involved in them. And yet they thought they moved the needle for Sunday. They thought they were moving the yeah, needle. Newsflash. Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky are loud. <laughs> Literally, when we got this job, I remember what they said to us. Y'all can't be doing overtime in the morning. And what did we do? We did overtime in the morning. Because that's who we are. <laughs> we are who we are. If you tap in for more than a second, you realize some days I'm the scared, panicky one, and you're screaming at me. Other days, I'm screaming at you because Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't have the guts <laughs> to win a playoff game with his right arm. But that's who we are. We are who we are. And I'm unafraid to say it out loud. <laughs> Insecurity is loud. No winning is loud. No. And it's in your face. And we're going to boast about it. Like Draymond, I'm right. clapping in your face listen, right now. You listen. God, Draymond was so awesome yesterday. So great. We're going to play some more sound. We're going to get to the calls. But you said something before the series. If you can't talk smack with this team (laughs) after four championships, then when can you talk smack? Never. And, you know, I know people say, well, Bonte, wait for the series to be over. Let me me tell you folks right now. Let me tell you right now. Everybody in the 916, everybody in Vacaville, everybody in King's Gear, De'Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, they're waking up this morning saying, damn, we got one more game left in the NFC offseason. Darren Fox already scheduling surgery for that left fracture index finger. Already scheduling it. Mike Brown, you know what? You were right about something because I started listening to Mike Brown when I got home yesterday. I said, you know what? I told you. He kind of sounds like it is He over. sounded scary. He sounded a little shook. I was shocked. But you know what? I don't think he was shook. He just knew what time it was. Yeah. He's been on that sideline before. Yeah. He's looking down and said, damn. Oh, boy. They're catching that rhythm. And I told you guys before game three, the pressure was on Sacramento to kick the Warriors while they were down. And it gave the Warriors a little bit of life. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit of mm-hmm. life. And now guess what? Tomorrow at around 7.30 p.m., you'll be doing exit interviews and pressures discussing how great of a season you had. Your little cute season is coming to an end. Let's go to Shambri in Arizona. Let's Shambri! Go. Yeah, fellas, appreciate you taking the call. It's been a minute. You know, I figured I'd wait until draft day to call in. But, you know, it's all about the dubs. So we're going to keep it that way. You know, we ain't even going to waste time on the king. It's a bonus or whatever you want to call him. All I know is his first name must be he ain't. Because every time he's on the court, I'd be like, he ain't. And look, when we win this series, Bonte, I don't, I don't want to hear you slapping tears of a clown. We better be slapping bow down for them Kings fans. Because we ain't a hater like you. Just bow down to a team that's greater than you. Ooh. Look, Ooh. I, I wanted to call Ooh. in because, Ooh. man, I'm so happy to see this strength of numbers back. And, and two things that have made a difference for me, uh, especially this, this series, have been having Wiggins and GP2 back. Not just for the defense. I know that's the obvious. But it just seems like when they were, you know, out and, and injured or whatever the case may be, that there was tension in the locker room, you know, with, with what happened in the offseason. And ever since they've been back, I haven't seen 
pool be so aesthetic. Now, it hasn't always translated to him producing on the offense, but it just seems like we're back to feeling like a team. I don't know no. what you guys think. No, I, you guys I, appreciate what I, you do. They're starting to come together. Thanks for the call, Shambri. Good to hear from you. I know you're big during the Niner season, but I know you've been laying back in the cut. You dropped the bar there. You're right. They are coming together at the right time. And Steve Kerr said, to hell with this. It's playoff time. I'm going to my six. And then who can be that seventh or eighth guy? Well, yesterday it was GP2 and DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo got off to a hairy start in the first half. But Gary Payton, second, Anthony Slater just joined us in, uh, at, at the first segment in the 8 o'clock hour. And Anthony Slater said, GP2 quietly changed the temperature of that game. And I 100% agree with him. The non-Steph Curry minutes, wears are down six. They go on a 12-0 run. Clay hits three straight threes. But Gary Payton, second, he had four offensive rebounds. Felt like he had them all during that stretch. I could be wrong, but he had some tap outs. He had some offensive rebounds to pick on some bonus. GP2 was great yesterday, and that's why that trade with James Wiseman. Nobody's talking about James Wiseman no more, and I love James Wiseman. I think he's going to have a great career in the NBA. He may or may not, but it's about the now, Shasky. It's about the now. There's no waiting on anybody. That's why Jonathan Kaminga's not playing. I get it. I love JK, but he can't play. He, he well, can't if they, play. If they he can't go, play and he can't mope. Well, if they're going to go where we want them to go and where they would like to go, he will have an opportunity to get back out on the floor against the right team. And he will be given that opportunity, and then it's up to him to earn that opportunity yep. and to maintain that opportunity. Yep. Life's about the door opening up very slightly for you and you jamming your foot in. You know, and GP2, yeah. as a guy who was an undrafted guy, has made the most of his opportunities. Yep. When coming back to the Warriors, he's hurt. He had an opportunity to kind of fade away. Yep. He's come back and made the most of his opportunities. Dante DiVincenzo hasn't been great in this series, if yep. we're being totally honest. Had a big pass last night in the fourth quarter and yep. a big-time dunk, yep. even though he can't hit you know, water if he fell out of the ocean right now. So, yeah, you got to make the most of your opportunities, and, and I'm kind of with you on that one. Moses Moody. Was basically on a milk carton for the whole season. He was. And you know what? You've gotten some, like, I, I know it's I, only a possession I, here, dude, I, a minute there. He's been a lot better than what I've expected from uh, Kaminga. You know, Kaminga has looked overwhelmed at times in the series. But my issue with Kaminga, and I love Jonathan Kaminga. I think he'll get a chance next series if they can but, get there. But my issue, and I saw this in game three when he got pulled from the game, he walked straight to the end of the bench. I didn't like that. And then you saw Andre Iguodala consoling him after game, or during game four. I didn't like the little moping, man. You got to wait your chance. He's 20. You got to, yeah, he is 20. But you got to realize, man, it's time to grow up. Well, you, you were around the playoffs last year. Monte. You, but I, I, I know, Shasky. They have a 32 year old guy who loses I, his mind I, every other series in Draymond Green. But like, he's a trusted he's agent. 20. But he's I a trusted know, agent. I know. I'm just he's saying, his kid's 20. He is 20. I'm not ready to. But to, I'm saying, I'm not burying him. I know at you're all. not. I'm I know. not doing that at all. But I'm saying, when you mope like that openly I agree in a playoff game, you just got to suck it up in Moody. Is 20 years old, and he's going out there saying, hey, I may play four minutes, I may play seven, but I got to go in there and play. So I, I, Maybe really I'm good. more lenient because I do believe that there's an, uh, a, a, a cultural assimilation that someone like Jonathan Kaminga, I, I understand, like we do this in, in baseball a lot. We're like, oh, the player X from, yeah. from this particular country doesn't understand what's going on. Da, da, da. I don't know. I think there's layers to it. And, yes, I agree with you on the outset. Like he does need to be more mature. But at the same time, Let's recognize who no, he is as an individual. I, I recognize that as always, but we had all 20. year for that, and he turned a corner. Yes, but when you he'll can't, get a chance. But again. you can't openly show up the that, coach that I and the players. With. He'll I learn. I watched him in Game Three. He'll learn. He walks straight to the end of the bench. He doesn't have that equity yet with this organization well, to do that. Well, that's all I'm saying. Not, that that's fair. And what I would say is, he will get an opportunity because of necessity to respond to the adversity that he's going yep. through right now. And that is how we will be able to judge him. No doubt. But hey, Moody, he looked ready. And we asked yesterday the callers, and they, it was some great calls yesterday. We said, outside of the top six, who do you trust in this game? A lot of people said Moody. You could trust him. Not too many people said GP two, but Gary Payton second showed up. And he showed out. D. Wright called that in the pregame show yesterday on NBC Sports Bay Area. G, uh, GP2 was special defensively yesterday, and that's why they wanted him back on this roster. And that's why the fan base yeah. was screaming for him. He showed. He had he a couple showed. of really nice layups around the rim. Yep. And there was one Good play cuts. in particular. He was in the corner, the short corner. Ball got kicked to Looney, and he came flying baseline, and Looney found him, and it was just a huge bucket. And just the activity and the effort on the glass and diving on the floor and you know uh, contesting shots. I think the one thing that we've underrated in the three wins – the Warriors' defense, they may not block a lot of shots in the perimeter. They're contesting more shots. No doubt. Effort level way better.